Hazel Mills here. I'm here with the UDO Super 8 and I'm going to show you how you can turn the filter into another oscillator. So this is actually a really handy way of getting the most out of your synth. So the way I've got it set up is in a way that we can't actually hear either of the oscillators and that is for a reason. So I've got it all the way to DDS2 so we're only hearing DDS2 except we're not hearing it because I've got it set to low frequency oscillator. The key is in the resonance. Now, although we're not hearing anything now, if we turn it up high enough, we start to hear a tone. Because it's self-oscillating, and it essentially then becomes an oscillator. Now, if you try and press different keys, you'll hear that it's all the same pitch, which is not that much use. It can be in some situations, but if we were to turn key track all the way on, you'll hear it is now responding to the pitch of the keys. Now, the tuning of this isn't, is pretty good, but you may notice that the notes are not really in tune with themselves. If they're a bit wonky to you, there's a reason for that. This is an analog filter and does require a little bit of calibration if you want it to be quite accurate in its pitching. If you're into the wonky thing, then fine, stick with it. But there's a really easy way to calibrate it so that it's all in tune with itself. And that is by hitting shift and patch button F. So as you can hear, it will do its little R2D2 sequence. And when that's done, you should find that you got some decent tuning. So it's in tune with itself. But if you wanted to check that it's actually at concert pitch, here the cutoff frequency is now controlling the pitch, i.e. the frequency of the filter. So, so you can tune it wherever you want, either to some other instrument or use a tuner, or you can bring in one of the other oscillators and tune it to that. We know that's now at concert pitch because it's in tune with the other oscillator. Lovely. Now you can hear that I've already done something to the envelope here. I've got a bit of release that wouldn't normally be there if you were to start with an init patch. And that's because what I'm essentially doing here is designing a little bit of an electric piano sound, which is a really nice thing that you can do with this function. kind of already sounds like one. If you whack a chorus on as well. So that's nice and everything, but what if you wanted to modulate it a bit, you know, have a bit of movement, maybe modulate the pitch? Well, that doesn't work in quite the same way because this is now the pitch. So if you wanted to modulate the pitch, you modulate the filter. So let's do it with the LFO. This is still completely in isolation and not with either of the other two oscillators. So we can spice it up a bit and start combining them. So let's bring in DDS1. At the moment we have them near enough the same pitch and you can do that. That's quite interesting, especially if they're sort of very close, but not quite close enough. You get this kind of beating and quite unusual, slightly broken sounding movement, which is really interesting. I've currently got DDS1 set to sine wave. I will say you can have the resonance all the way up. However, you will probably find that if you want to combine it with either of the two other oscillators, that it will be much louder. So if you have it just on the cusp of where it self oscillates and creates that tone, but not so high that it's a lot louder than the other two oscillators, then that's kind of the sweet spot. So we can either have it matching in pitch and have this kind of beating doubled effect, or we could change the pitch and let's say do an octave. It's also worth mentioning, let's make this a square. 
you will come to realize that the higher the pitch you have the resonance or rather the frequency of the filter inevitably if you think that is opening the filter more the higher that is, also the more of the harmonics you're going to hear of the other oscillators. If you're happy with quite a filtered down sound, then having the pitch lower, either matching the pitch or a little bit higher than that, is fine. But if you want it quite a lot brighter, then bringing it higher... So this is two octaves higher. So you're getting a lot more of the harmonics of... of DDS1. Let's bring in DDS2 and maybe another octave altogether. Okay, so we've got three different octaves happening. You could also get a little bit crazy with having different pitches than the fundamental. So that's the fifth. We could maybe have the major third. You could use that approach to get yourself an organ sound as well. You could also use this. This is something I've actually done in a previous video on the Super 6. Uh, but you could use this concept to make quite unusual bell sounds. If you choose random pitches that are a bit less diatonic. Sounds much more like a bell there. If you want to go even harsher with your sound, you can modulate the filter with DDS2 and it it's essentially has the same effect as cross-modulation. You can go subtly with it. Or you can... Much more ring moddy. And this is just one of the two layers of the Super 8. So imagine what you can do if you combine the two layers and have two different things going on. Maybe even mess around with some panning and have a distinction between the two sounds. Things can get quite interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.